Hey everyone, we have a tropical wave out in the Atlantic, which is basically just a cold pool created by thunderstorms off of the East African coast. And you see that cold pool propagates off to the west. And if we turn it over to satellite, you can see that those cold pools create thunderstorms out over here in the Atlantic. And this is generally gonna move off to the west northwest over time you know, we could over the next seven days see a 40 percent chance of this storm developing which is why there is a nice little orange blob here now you might be wondering what the next development stage of this system is going to be and the next thing that we're going to be looking out for is whether or not this storm can develop a low pressure you see and how that happens is generally the sun warms up the atmosphere that air rises and drops and eventually creates a vacuum creating a low pressure system and after that low pressure forms it can go in a couple of ways and what we're looking for out there in the environment is whether or not the storm is going to be dealing with some drier air or not looking at our relative humidity over the next couple of days you can see that we do have some browns out here that's a lot of dry air to the north and west of our system right now but you can see over where that low pressure system is there is some green and that's a decent amount of moisture so those are going to be combating over the next couple of days and as we go into the fifth of September you can see that the storm is going to be battling it even more but that low pressure system could eventually develop into a tropical storm and that'll be tropical storm Gabriel there is definitely some things to keep an eye out on this storm though because if it tries to battle this dry air a little bit unsuccessfully it won't be as strong as this but if it can go kind of modeled like it is then it could develop in the next couple of days if we look over at the euro ensemble member though you can see that it isn't as favorable of a environment around this storm as it pushes off to the west so there's definitely some differences in between our models one of the things i've been noticing over the past couple of runs is, is that if we go back into previous runs you can definitely tell we've had a little bit of a southern shift on our latest models and this is pushing our storm further down to the south does now does this mean that there's going to be you know some big change to our forecast down the line well, let's go look at it okay so here's the euro on the last run and as i push this forward you can see we got a bunch of little model members out there so there's some decent agreement that this storm will get started as we go into around september 7th to September 8th which again still pretty darn far out there we just got into September very recently here so we, you know we're talking about today's September 1st it's gonna be around September 8th so we're about seven days out here but generally that's a pretty consolidated spread of our model run still pretty far down to the south and as you can see some of our models do bring it into the Caribbean near Puerto Rico but a lot of them are still spread out further up to the north our most majority of them are more further to the north we haven't seen any significant significant shifts down to the south in the long term other than in the short term so will those shifts down to the south in the short term eventually impact our models in the future that's really going to depend on where our high pressure and low pressure systems kind of hang out here you can see we're generally going to have a high pressure system further up to the north in the central atlantic and that is eventually going to spread out to the west a bit keeping our system further off to the west but as you can see as this low pressure system pushes up against this high pressure system it creates a weakness on the western side of it so if our storm is stronger it, it will try to sneak up to the north as soon as that happens if it's a little bit weaker it might stay a little bit further to the west but generally it will try to sneak up to the north what we're watching out for is what this high pressure system does after that low pressure system comes through as you can see that low pressure comes through builds that high pressure a little bit further off to the west but you can see that there still is generally a weakness expected eventually as our system tries to get closer to the united states again this thing is still pretty far out over 10 days out from impacting us it just came off of the African coast so we've got a while but generally things are in agreement here that uh, we need to watch out just how much this high pressure system establishes itself because if it's no weakness develops back over here to the west uh further into the future this storm will continue to go off to the west pretty much no problem so that's why it's big thing to watch now if we come over to our GEFS ensembles you can see that it also uh, kind of has the same thing it has this storm a little bit further to the south if we come back into previous runs it's been slowly trending down further to the south but overall in the long term not too big of a shift we still see that eventual weakness of the high pressure develop and our storm system form up into a hurricane nonetheless but moves up to the north pretty quickly and away from the united states so still nothing hopping on our models here 
yet of this thing hitting the United States, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on just in case we do see some changes down the line. Now, looking back over at the United States, we are still expecting this Northwest flow to continue into the central United States down into the Southeast. And eventually we are going to see this trough eject this little low pressure system eject into the United States. That's going to bring some shear, some stronger winds above our heads down to the surface, which will allow for, you know, some of moisture to advect up to the north. And we could be talking about a severe weather threat as we move into the Ohio Valley with this trough and potentially over here near the Appalachians over into Pennsylvania. Coming down to our lower level winds, if everything can line up correctly, which it's looking like it might not, but we'll continue to keep an eye on it. Could have some lower level shear in there as well. If we have enough forcing, we could see some storms get started really anywhere from like the Kansas area over at around the 3rd of September back over into the southeast going up into the Appalachians like over there near Pennsylvania over there into the east coast. We'll have multiple opportunities from the 3rd to the 4th to potentially produce some damaging winds, some large hail and maybe a tornado threat. But again, in order for that tornado threat to happen, we've got to see everything kind of line up just perfectly. And this is going to be a pretty disorganized system, but it's something to keep an eye out for. Speaking of severe weather, we are expecting a marginal risk for severe weather out over here near Oklahoma and parts of Kansas. You can see throughout the day today, we're going to be seeing some disorganized showers and thunderstorms really from Wichita back over here just north of Oklahoma City near like the Woodward south of St. John area. That should continue at around 7 to 8 p.m. and then eventually maybe could see some more storms to the east of Wichita, some of those which may be severe. And then after that, we see those storms start to fall apart. Going into tomorrow, September 2nd, we are going to see the return of some severe weather back up here near North and South Dakota going into Minnesota as another little short wave kind of the leading edge really of our trough coming into the United States. You can see that that pushes down into the St. Cloud and Minneapolis area eventually. Then as we go into the afternoon, we could see some even more organized severe weather south of Fargo by around 4 p.m. down near St. Cloud, Minneapolis, and then back over there near Clear Lake, South Dakota by the time we get into 7 p.m. And then eventually that line of storms continues to move down to the south and east towards Mankato and Sioux Falls as we go into the overnight hours. And that could push down into Iowa. But as you can see, a lot of this is outflow dominant. Maybe we see a little bit of a southern extension of our marginal risk if this looks a little bit more organized. But as that daylight heating goes away, these storms will struggle. That pushes through. And then by the time we get into the day after tomorrow, you can see that frontal boundary is going to continue to push down to the south. And we could have thunderstorms and maybe even some severe weather capability all the way from Wisconsin down over there near Davenport, near Kansas City and Wichita, but it's probably going to be the most organized back over here near Kansas and Kansas City and parts of the Missouri area as well, little parts of Nebraska. But yeah, generally a large line of storms will push down to the south and east. That's going to bring the chances for some severe weather, damaging winds, not really too much of a tornado threat, but if we get some weird boundary interactions, we might have a small tornado threat back over here near Topeka and Kansas City. Now, in terms of temperatures across the United States, that northwest flow and that trough coming in is going to bring down a cool down. But before that, happens it's going to warm up a little bit over the next couple of days from today going into tomorrow we're going to be in the 70s and 80s across most of the country with some isolated pockets and higher elevations with lower temperatures and then eventually we're going to see that trough chart to dip down into the northern portion of the United States as we head into the third that's going to bring some 40s and 60s up there it's still generally warmer though back over into the south and southeast going into the north or kind of the eastern coast over there near North Carolina and Virginia and then eventually you can really see that trough start to dip into the United States by the time we get into the fourth with some cooler temperatures making it all the way down into the Ohio Valley. I mean this we're getting pretty close to peak heating here. We're talking about 60s, 70s all the way across the board all the way down potentially into Kentucky parts of Missouri and Tennessee maybe getting into northern Alabama and Georgia as well. And after that our cooler temperatures continue to push off uh, really into the north portion of the United States of the eastern United States mainly hanging out uh, over there into the Great Lakes region also coming up into the northeast as well with that heat unfortunately still sticking around here for Texas going into the southeast and the east coast all the way over there near Raleigh with some 80s and 90s out there and then as that trough continues to push in we're going to see a surge eventually push into the southeast as we move into the sixth as well as some drier and cooler air comes into the northern southeast and also into Oklahoma and Texas Arkansas as well and by the time we get into the seventh things are still relatively cool out there so you know a prolonged period here of some cooler temperatures mainly up here for this region but it could make its way as far south as the southeast. But again, with that battle line kind of being right here, could be 
some changes in the forecast as it could be a little bit warmer or maybe a little bit cooler and drier than what is forecasted right now. And that really just depends on how much that trough ejects down to the south into the southeast. Yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed this little animated forecast at the beginning of it. It was very hard work. It took me about three hours just to make that beginning part. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm going to do it every video, but it was a fun experiment. And, and yeah, but we're going to be keeping an eye on everything. We'll have another video tomorrow. I think I'm going to start doing daily uploads, even if there's not anything happening, just to get something out there so you guys can wade through all the misinformation or whatever is out there. But anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you guys uh, on the next video. Peace.